In this video, I'm going to show you how to add dynamic conditional content in Google Data Studio based on numerical ranges. Hi, this is Ahmed from CIOWAC and I help you learn Data Studio to create better reports quickly and more efficiently. Today, I'm going to show you a technique that helps us not only show numbers, but also communicate insights with our reports and draw people's attention to the areas of the report that are most important and need immediate action. So instead of just showing a number, we want to show if it's good or bad. Have our campaigns performed better or worse than expected? Is that conversion rate less than or more than the target? Project managers have always followed this concept by adding a kind of traffic light signal to their reports, amber, green, and red, to show which part of the project are fine, which parts are at risk, and which parts are critically overdue and need immediate attention. As online marketers, we should be doing this too, especially if we know the target for the KPIs that we are representing on our reports. But this is not easy to achieve in Data Studio. We cannot simply write a different text message or show different icons based on different ranges of a metric. At least right now, it is not possible. That's why we decided to create a custom component to work around this limitation. And today, I'm going to show you how it works. Make sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to share this free component with you so you can also use it on your reports. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's see what we can create with this conditional content component. Here we have a report and we have different metrics in a scorecard shown on this report. And we have three ranges, revenue less than $1,000, between $1,000 and $2,000 and more than $2,000. Now, each of these columns shows one type of conditional content that we can show based on this range of metric, one of the capabilities of this component. So in this first column, what I've done is just I placed a special character, a solid circle. You can find it on the character map uh, on a PC or the equivalent software on your Mac. And I just put this character, increase the font size and choose the color of the font for the character. So I'd said, if the revenue is less than a thousand dollar, I want this character to be rendered on this report. The same character with the yellow color and the same character with a green color. As simple as that, I could create a traffic light signal based on three different ranges of this metric. The next column, exactly like that, but just instead of putting a character, I decided to put an emoji. And this emoji could be anything. And as you can see, this is not part of the scorecard beneath. This is another component overlaid on the top of this scorecard. In the next example, I'm simply showing different pieces of text for each range, with different color, of course. And the final one, again, I'm using emojis. A green check mark, a warning sign, and a red cross. Now let's take a look at the dynamic example and compare the features and capabilities of conditional content component with the traditional built-in conditional formatting in Data Studio. So here we have a sample criteria. Our metric is the number of new users and we have four ranges, 0 to 10,000, 10 to 20,000, 20 to 30, and 30 to 50,000. And depending on the range of this metric, we want to be able to show different pieces of content. So here I have a simple scorecard with conditional formatting applied to it based on these ranges. And at the top, I again have the same scorecard, but this time it's a bit larger. So this is the scorecard and I have put three different instances of the conditional content component overlaid over this scorecard. This one, this one, and this one. Now let's use the filter on the left to dynamically change the number of new users on this scorecard and see how these change. So for example, first of all, Google Organic, more than 20,000. Let's click on only and see how do they update. 20,000, it's good enough. We have written good enough. 
we have changed the smiley and we have changed the color of the circle at the top. At the bottom, with conditional formatting, the only thing that we could change was the background color of the scorecard, which is now exactly the same as the background color of the report and the color of the font. Now, if I change the filter to direct none, it would fall under the second range, 10 to 20,000. Let's see what happens. It should say fine. Let's wait for it. Wait even more. It was taking too long, but finally it says fine. The smiley changed, the color changed, and at the bottom again, the only thing we could change with conditional formatting was the color of the background and color of the font. Let's see some examples. This one is a bit interesting, isn't it? It says too bad. 3070 new users is really too low. So let's look at it. We will actually be able to show the actual number on the scorecard in the content that was being rendered on the report. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Okay, so let's change it back to a happy face and go back to edit mode to see how to install and configure this component. Okay, so we have a blank report over here because first of all, I want to show you how to add the component to your report. This is not a built-in chart in Data Studio. This is a community, not a visualization, but yeah, maybe somehow a visualization, but it's a component. So you have to click on this little icon here and then click on explore more and then here it is not yet on the list we haven't published it so it's not public you have to know how to install it on your report for this i'm going to click build your own visualization and then here in the manifest parts field this is what you need to type in exactly like this and then click submit as soon as you do that will find conditional content by cmac.com and then you can click on it and add it to your report. So first thing first, it's highly likely that the first time that you add the component to your report, you will see this error. Let's see what it says. Community visualizations disabled. Where? Where is it disabled? Have been turned off by the owner of this data source. So we have to go and try to edit the data source and hopefully you have the permission or ownership of the data source so you can do that and then you have to come here community visualization access click on it and turn it to on because this is a third party visualization under support and by turning on the community visualization access you are allowing it to access your data in case the number of new users to decide what content to show on your report. As soon as you do that, you will see the default content. Default content will be shown whenever there is no range selected for that metric. And this is the time you have to decide which metric you want to base your criteria on. So for example, let's not use new users and this time use something like page views, okay, page views. First of all, let's also add a scorecard to the support to see what kind of number are we working with. Okay, so it's a bit more than 300,000. Now let's back to our conditional content component and head over to this time tab to define the ranges and the default content and set the configurations for this component. First of all, we have default content. We can change it to anything like no range, is selected or it is not true maybe there's a range selected out of range something like that so it's not in any of the ranges that we defined then you can set this style url and font family based on any google font that you like this is using the same backbone of our google fonts component which you can find a youtube video for and install that on your reports as well if you want to have on brand report if you want to use any Google font in your reports in Google Data Studio. And finally, here you can have inline CSS, which I'm not going to use in this case because it will apply to the default content only. 
Now, the fun begins. We can define our first range. We have to first enable the range and set a minimum and maximum. So let's say we want this range to be from a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand and the content would be fair enough something like that okay now this doesn't apply to this component right now because as we can see the number of page views which is also applied in this case is much more than that okay so I'm going to leave it here. You can define the font size and the font color and the background color as well. But I'm going to define the second range with the minimum of 200,000 and the maximum of 400,000. As soon as the value of the metric falls within this range, the content is applied to the component here and it's shown under report. Now I can say very nice. I can change the font size, make it a bit larger. Oh, was it actually smaller? 48. I can change the color and I can change the background color if I want to, which I'm going to pass. Oh, you cannot reset it or you can reset it, but it doesn't apply. I'm not sure I have to check it out. Just like this, you can define up to five ranges for your metric. Range number three, you can enable, have the minimum and maximum in place, set your content, set your font size and colors, and you're done. Then you can decide about range four and range five, and you're done. Now, let's see how we can add the actual amount of metric in our text. So here we said very nice, but what if we want to say very nice, this number, is really good so we can say very nice and i'm going to show you something you can put html in there br tag means break so it's a line break now we can start with the number itself and this is the way we render the actual number on the component so we put metric exactly like this in the text and the component will replace this with the actual amount of metric at that moment based on all the other settings in the report. So this page views is really great. Now we can resize the component and that's it. Now, I'm sure that you can already see how useful this can be and in what kind of creative ways you can use this component in your reports to maybe show the performance of the metrics or communicate insight to the viewer of the report. Is the number good or bad? Is this number less than or more than what we expected? Is it on target, less than target, more than target? You can define all of these inside the content of each range and show a relevant, timely, and correct message to the viewer of your report. As an example, let's take a look at the final page of the sample report here. So this is one of the ways that you can use the conditional content component to show dynamic chart titles above, below, or beside your charts. So let's say that you know that the target for monthly revenue for this business is $5,000. You already know that this is a fixed number. Then you have a graph here, a time series chart that shows the revenue this month versus last month. And then even without showing the actual metric on the report, you can use it inside a sentence close to the chart title. Revenue was this amount last month, which is more than a monthly target of five grand. So this is a great way for adding context aware commentary on your report. Instead of just writing something on a PDF after a report is generated, or writing something on the report that you have to make sure that it matches every number that could be presented on a report, good or bad.
I'm personally really excited about this component because this is something that wasn't really easy to achieve in Data Studio before this. And we've already started to update some of our client reporting by adding little pieces of insight or indication of the KPI performance here and there to help them consume the content on those reports more easily. Now it's your time to go set it up and use it to improve the user experience and clarity of your reports. I really can't wait to see what kind of creative ways you guys come up with to use this component in your reporting dashboards. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can use this custom component to improve your Data Studio reports. If you want to learn more about Data Studio, I have more tutorials on YouTube which you can look up and watch. And if you're new to Measure School, make sure to subscribe so you can get notified of the future videos that we publish. And finally, I would love to hear from you. So feel free to leave your questions and comments below. This is Ahmed. See you in the next video.